Seahawks fans, wherever you may be. Thanks for listening to the show. Join your hosts, Bill Alfstead and Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Hey, Seahawks fans. Welcome back to another episode of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alfstead, sitting down with co-host Keith Myers. Uh, if you watched the show, the last show, uh, I was uh, on vacation and didn't have a, a great uh, uh, back screen, and my audio quality was uh, not good. Keith kind of took over uh, to help us get through that show, but uh, things are back to normal now. One of the things not back to normal, unfortunately, is Seattle uh, got out of its winning streak, um, had won the previous three games, go into Cincinnati and drop a, a real tough loss to the Bengals, 13-17. to 17. Uh, why did the the Seahawks lose? There were a lot of things uh, contributing uh, to this, and we're going to talk about all of it. Welcome in, Keith. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, yeah, it's good to have you um, back in in full um, uh, f- at full speed here and 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 everything. So <clears throat> I wish that the game had gone better um, this week, but. You know, it it just is what it is. Um, this was the team came out played poorly, and they played against a good team, and and this is what happens. Yeah, you know, it was it was funny. It's like uh, when you go look at uh, everything, you go look at the box score, you look at the stats. Uh, Seattle did fairly well in this game. Uh, they dominated on defense. They dominated against uh, the run. After the first two touchdowns that Joe Burrow was able to get, uh, the defense was able to kind of shut him down. Uh, they shut down Jamar Chase uh, after after that. Um, the the running game was completely ineffective. Uh, Seattle did a great job there. So the defense showed up, I thought, uh, yeah, after agreed. settling in and did a great job. Normally that sort of performance is going to get you a really good shot at winning a game. Um, the offense, Keith, for some reason, this thing is just kind of crazy now. The first drive they go down, they score. A uh, real nice, methodically down the field. Some great plays. Ken Walker showed up, uh, both running the ball and receiving, and they they punch it in. After that, uh, Cincinnati comes back and and um, scores fourteen points. Uh, is just as easy. Um, but then things got uh, really tight uh, for Cincinnati. They weren't able to move the ball for the rest of the game. Basically, they were mm-hmm. uh, they had scored uh, another three points on a situation where they didn't have to move the ball. Seattle turned the ball over on a Geno Smith uh, interception. They didn't gain any yards. We hold them to no yards gain, but they still kicked a field goal there. That That's their 17 points. Yeah. And then Seattle just struggled all game, um, particularly in the red zone, Keith, where well, they were uh, partic- one for five overall. When, particularly when Geno was throwing the football. Um, I mean, it's not just in the end zone. He just had, did not have, um, uh, a good game. And this is kind of what happens is the whole, um, offense just sputtered. Um, part of it was, you know, the, there were some blocking issues, but man, throw the damn ball, dude. And he's like yeah. holding on to it for years. And of course he's getting sacked over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a combination, Keith. When I, when I went back and looked at it. You know, you can you can lay uh, quite a bit of the blame at Geno. I'm going to, let's just say 50%. 50% of the blame's on Geno Smith. Took some sacks, uh, particularly at the end. Didn't let go of the ball. Wasn't finding open receivers, that sort of thing. Still 27 to 41, 323 yards. No touchdowns, a couple interceptions. Took four sacks. Three of those came at the end in critical moments. Uh, so you can say he was definitely holding the ball too long. Um, but you also have to take a look at the pressure rate. Uh, Seahawks pressured Geno Smith, uh, 45.8% of his dropbacks. If you take a look at, um, the hits before, uh, 12 combined times during their three game win streak, uh, against Geno, um, and, uh, the Bengals were able to get to him 13 times in four quarters in just one game. Most hits came under 2.5 seconds uh, from, the, from the snap as well. Yeah, see, um, I, so I don't know if I agree with that last point because there was a lot of times he was back there waiting, 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 waiting. Oh, and now true. he starts to move and gets hit. 
Um, and yep. that seemed like it was the entire that second too. half. Where yeah, that he just too. wouldn't get the ball out of his hand. Yeah, no, it was both. I mean, it was both. It was both. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to, to take anything away from Gino having a poor game. That that happened. But also the offensive line play down the stretch was poor. Phil Haynes ended up with a 34.6 pro football focus grade. Jake Curhan, 53.8. Hubbard had eight pressures on Curhan alone. The running backs had a poor day uh, protecting Gino and pass protection. Uh, Ken Walker had a 22.6 pass block grade. DJ Dallas had a 5.1 uh, pass block grade from Pro See, Football uh, Focus. That, so there were a lot played, of issues. He was on offense for four snaps in that game. You're really going to say that it mattered that much um, that he deserved that low of a grade? He was on I'm the just field saying, for it was a, four it was offensive a, snaps. It was a group effort. It was a group effort to fail is what I'm saying. And then you add Shane Waldron into the mix, some of the play calling and so forth, not scheming, uh, some play action, not moving the pocket outside, uh, some quick hitting type things would have been nice. It seemed like Gino was always trying to throw the ball down the field. He called quick hitting things and Gino didn't throw the ball. He would drop back. He'd have like DK on the slant and decide not to let it go. And then run around for a while to hope and hope that someone else would get open. Like he had guys open and he just didn't throw it. It's like watching Russell Wilson back there again. It was frustrating. <laughs> Cause that yeah, was, that, and- that was the rust thing. Right. And just don't take the easy pass. No, I'm going to wait 10 seconds, run around like, um, you know, like it's just backyard football and then go for the big play. And it worked often enough that the team was, you know, fine with it and and um the offense worked really well but uh sorry gino you're not that guy like be the gino smith that we've seen for the last year and a half like get the ball out of your hand make smart decisions when he doesn't do that it, it's not pretty yeah and as a result one for five in the red zone uh three points scored by the seahawks in four trips to the red zone in the second half um we were five of 12 on third downs uh, four times inside the 10-yard line, came out with zero points. Um, Seattle did have some explosive plays, though. Seattle had seven explosive plays over 16 yards. That was the second-best total in the NFL. So not not everything that Gina was doing was bad. He he had some nice completions. Um, but, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, okay, so let's take away some some positive things. The defense showed up. The defense really showed um, up in, in this one. In a, in a big way. Now, I was uh, very concerned in the first quarter, uh, heading into the second quarter, when Cincinnati was able to kind of just do what they needed to do to get the ball down the field. Um, I think they had a 13-play drive on their first possession to score, and then the second uh, score was a little quicker. Jamar Chase got involved. Um, I thought uh, Woolen was, was struggling a little bit in coverage uh, in particular. And then all of a sudden, after that, it was a completely different team as far as the defensive side of the ball was concerned. They just didn't allow anything to happen after Joe Burrow completed 10 straight passes to open the game. Mm-hmm. Um, five first downs gained by the Bengals on their final eight possessions. Um, 76 yards gained by Cincinnati in two plus quarters on those eight possessions. Um, they did not have a drive over 20 yards after yeah. that. So I, um, I really think what it, I mean, you look at it and the, it was the first two drives. They just cruised down the field. I, I really think part of it was just, that was the script that they had gone in and they'd practiced those 15 plays, right? The 15 plays that, that are scripted at the beginning of, of each game. Um, they practiced those, they'd run them. Everyone knew what was going on and, and they executed them really well. Um, when they came off the script um, and things were, you know, a half a step slower, that was all Seattle needed. And honestly, they got pressure on Burrow. They moved him around. They hit him. They sacked him. They stopped the run. They they um, had great corner had play from Witherspoon and Trey Brown. Great corner play. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, it was a one of those things where um, they got sacks. You know, Ray yeah. Jones, Mafe had sacks run defense. Like I said, limited 
Joe Mixon to 38 yeah. yards on 12 carries, 46 yards overall, no carries over five yards, period. Um, well, Jamar yeah, Chase so had, had that, had a, a big, big thing right at the beginning. Um, you know, like that, the, the first, first two drives he was, he was involved in, but he ended the game with six receptions. That's yeah. it. So, yeah. and almost all of those came in the first two drives. Yeah. Chase had two catches for uh, eight targets and 20 yards, uh, in the second half. Um, so they shut him down. They shut him down. Uh, so this, this, what I'm saying is the defense came, came to play, showed up, gave this team the best possible chance to win on the road. Your defense shows up on the road like that. We expected, you know, going into this season, we expected the offense to be kind of where the defense is at, um, more consistent, showing up, uh, putting the team in a position to win. And all we've just seen some struggles, um, kind of, you know, struggles a, a lot little of bit been, in the run game a lot of it's been offensive line related um just a lot of injuries every single member of the, of the offensive it's line true. has that's true um has missed uh time um and it's just been it's it, it's been a lot of problems there um they did get charles cross back and in, early in the game it looked like yeah. it, it was going to make a difference but by the end of the game his feet looked like they were in concrete um yeah. yes. he was he was really struggling to move his feet. I thought that it was one of those situations, like maybe he, I mean, he came back, he was clearly ready, um, but maybe as far as like, you know, being in game shape, he wasn't there yet. And maybe they should have put him on a pitch count and um, had him, you know, out there for the first half um, and maybe yeah. in the beginning of the third quarter and then pulled him um, and, and let Forsyth come in and, and finish the game because he just, he wasn't he wasn't good down the stretch it was one of the one of the problems and he's usually one of the best on that line and when he's one of the worst that that's a problem and Kerhan struggled too and even evan brown in the middle struggled i mean yeah here's here's the thing you got to give cincinnati a little bit of credit on their defense um i thought they played well i thought they rushed the passer and um put, put pressure on gino at critical moments in the game particularly on third down. Seattle was only 5 of 12 on third down conversions. It's not terrible, but you want to be able to have at least a few more of those conversions um, in a game, especially on the road. And um, Anthony Bradford looked good again, Keith. Uh, had a 90.5 uh, pro football focus run blocking grade. Um, he did, did pretty well in pass blocking as well. He certainly wasn't the problem on the line. No, um, and all. also uh, my final statement is uh, Jake Bobo's a stud. Uh, we found out again today that uh, you know it, it, during the game that that Jake Bobo shows up on game day and plays. Um, I just real impressed with the way that he uh, plays and uh, took that hit and just really held on to the ball. It was I was just surprised because he just mm -hmm. got nailed in in the head, head to head kind of a hit. Uh, and um, he just kind of bounced up. I mean, he went into concussion protocol. I hope he's going to be okay. Um, but uh, man, what a what a player! He needs a little bit more opportunity, I think. Yeah, um, he ended up playing. Um, what was it thirty one percent of the snaps in this game, um, which is up from previous games. So he the team's clearly noticing the effort that he puts in, what he does in terms of run blocking, um, and. So yeah, he's getting he's getting a lot of run um, as a um, the fourth wide receiver. So uh, and he's earned it. I mean, he he really is doing well. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens when Derek Young comes back. So um, from from what I'm hearing from you, at least initially on the show, is that you know quite a bit of the blame on this loss comes from Geno Smith. I think so. I and when your offensive line is struggling, you have to make that adjustment and get the ball out of your hands faster. And this isn't a case where he wanted to do that, but couldn't because guys weren't getting open because Lockett and Metcalf were getting open. Um, and whether it was and Jigba was really open on one play, could have had a touchdown. Oh yeah. And, and Metcalf was open on another one um, wide open down the middle um, for an easy touchdown. And, and we'll say uh, this Metcalf did give up on one, 
one route, the Castino and interception too. I don't know if I would say that he gave up on it. It looked to me like he was cutting to go out and Gino threw the ball in. Um, I think he should have yeah, come back that towards the ball mean and fought. That, that would actually mean that Medcalf actually tried to cut and go out. He just kind of stopped and turned around and stood still. Mm, he he cut and started to move, and then the ball went in, and he just kind of stopped. But he at that point, he'd seen that the ball had been thrown and not to him. Um, yeah, and it, I you're right. I don't I don't know for sure, but it was a bad play. <laughs> I do. I do know that for sure. Um, yeah, it was, and I didn't. I didn't pay. I, I looked at that was just you know one of those situations where he, um, kind of faked in and, and was going out. Gino threw the ball in, um, and the play had no hope except for an interception, and that's what happened. Um, okay, um, that's you know it happens. It's fine, um, but it comes down to like. That wasn't the play that 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 bugged me the most. That was one that, okay, it's a miscommunication. It sucks. It like the the interception down in the red zone. Um, that was that one was just awful, because <laughs> he he predetermined where he was going with the ball, and where he was going with the ball was in double coverage, and of course it was picked. Like I mean, it was just like it it had no hope the moment it left his hand. Um. Uh, it was just a bad decision, a bad throw. Like that's the kind of stuff that Gino hasn't done since you know taking over the starting job in Seattle. He hasn't made those kind of plays um, yeah. until I think he it made was that the, kind of play. His, his poorest performance so far as the starter for Seattle. I I want to be able to account a little bit for the pressure. I mean, being pressured forty five forty six percent of the time is is a tough deal in the NFL and, and they got to him four times through all of that though Keith Seattle has 381 yards to 214 for the Bengals 294 passing yards to 168 87 rushing yards to 46 5.4 yards per play to 4.0 24 first downs to 15 the the, the play the difference in this game was the red zone stuff um, converting one for five opportunities, but also not coming away with any points in the red zone. So they didn't get touchdowns, but they also didn't get field goals. Now, Jason Myers had a couple of field goals in this game. Great. Good for, good for him. But we had so many opportunities and we just failed over and over again. We had four downs on five, five chances. Uh, and and failed to to barely move the ball on any of those, mm -hmm. um, and it's just tough. I mean, you can't win on the road when you're not giving your team a chance to get into the end zone. And I don't know what what I I don't know how to diagnose the, the issue um, because when it happens over and over and over again, you know there there's something going on there. And I'm maybe you saw something. Well, I saw a couple things. I mean, the team tried to run it in um, the last couple of weeks. You, they get down close. You just give it to Walker and let him pound it in. And, it, and it's it's been uh, pretty effective. It was effective in the first drive where they just, they you know got down to the one and then just gave it to Walker and let him pound it in. And they kept they tried that a couple times. Um, and you know, the, to the Bengals' credit, they stuffed it. They they got extra guys up on the. Um, on the line of scrimmage and, and stop those plays and, and put the ball into um, Gino's hands. And, you know, um, after that, I mean, he threw a pick, um, missed a couple guys, threw a ball out, out of bounds that should have, that could have been caught if he'd thrown it um, a little closer, um, you know, to the, to the field. Um, and then the offensive line also, kind of forgot to block on a couple of plays and he just got clobbered. Um, and those ones aren't on him because that was, it was just way too fast right up the middle. Um, and that's so, I mean, that's right at the end of the game. I mean, let's talk about that, that last play. Yeah. Um, where, you know, it's, it's fourth down. We're on the, you know, we got pushed back for, from a penalty. We got inside the 10, it's first and goal. And then it's now it's fourth and about 20. Mm -hmm. And, we just need somebody to give us a, a, a chance. I think 
actually it was like uh we'd picked up half of that so it was uh to end jigba so it was like fourth down and about 10 11 yards to go last play of the game and we didn't even have a chance to get the playoff i mean gino just got sacked they came around charles cross and and came up the middle i believe simultaneously uh hill and and um hendrickson both got in yeah. there and just decimated Gino within a couple of seconds. I mean, yeah, with both of them essentially untouched, um, it would have been one thing if it had just been the pressure from the outside, he could have stepped up in the pocket, um, but he couldn't because there was also a guy right in his face. And if it was just in his face, he could have slid one way or the other, made the guy miss, but it, you're not sliding away from a guy coming around the edge like that. I mean, the fact that it was both meant he, there was really nothing Gino could do uh, unless he had just got his back foot on the ground and threw it. Right. Um, but when you need 20 yards, um, you can't get the ball out that fast and, and expect it to be um, enough. You've got to get down to the one or get into the end zone. Those are, I mean, those are the, um, the options because you got to get down to the one to get the, the uh, first down or you got to get it into the end zone and, and win the game. And you can't throw a, a you know, five yard pass uh, in that situation on fourth and, and 20. So yeah. he had to um, give the routes, um, a chance to get deeper and never had the opportunity the, to. Who was the receiver uh, that Gino hooked up with to get it, even get us down in the range um, right at the end there? Um, was, was that in Jigba? Lockett, maybe. Lockett, yeah, it, where we picked up like 30 yards with no, about that, a, yeah, minute, that one was a minute to go. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's just kind of one of those mixed bag things because Gino played okay, he made some plays. He got us in a position to win the game. Um, and we just failed to do it. And it's heartbreaking because the defense played so well. You get down there, you think you're going to have a chance, and you don't even get a chance to let the ball go um, to, to, to see if something can happen. Uh, so that's just disappointing. It's a disappointing way to lose. It's a disappointing loss in that Seattle now is 3-2. and two. The 49ers also lose, so we could have gained a game um, back on them, but now they're five and one, we're three and two. And so um, it, it's tough. Now we need to kind of put things together, figure out what happened. Hopefully we can get Abe Lucas back soon. Uh, I don't know exactly what to do with Kerhan Keith over at uh, right tackle. Um, maybe Jason Peters is ready to come in, Keith. I, I would certainly think that Seattle would take a look at making a move there. Um, I don't know if it's going to be Peters. Um, I think at this point it should be Forsyth. Um, but he doesn't, he hasn't played on the right though at all. He played there last year. So I, I, I think you can, you can bring him in there. Uh, I mean, he's the swing tackle. He's the guy that that um, if everyone's healthy, he's the he's the extra tackle that's uh, available on game days. Not Kerhan because he can play both sides. Um, he had to last year uh, in a couple different times and did pretty well. So I'm, I I would say you 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 bring him in. Um, he's a better pass blocker than Kerhan. Not quite as good in the run, but Kerhan's been banged up. He rolled that ankle. He looked slower than normal um in this game so and look not as powerful and i just think it had to do with um him being banged up um and hubbard and, that, and hendrickson are are tough they're a tough duo they are um and i think that you could have um you know gone ahead and with him being banged up and 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 that ankle being being clearly a problem um bringing forsyth in um, to play that spot. Now, I actually would think that Forsyth should have come in on the other side um, and given Charles Cross a break. Um, if not, I do too. you know, um, it, maybe it didn't have to be, okay, Cross is going to play the first half and then come out and not play at all. But maybe it was he needed to get um, a series here and there off throughout the game just to stop him from wearing down um, and let Forsyth play. And well, I think listen, that... We we don't Overall, have any special but, ability, Keith, at all. I mean, you and I watching a game, we can see the dude breaking down, you mm -hmm. know, wearing down, breaking down, losing a step. Are the coaches oblivious to this? Come on. Give the give the team the best chance to win. Put the best players on the field at the moment 
you know, Charles Cross wasn't the best player at the moment. Yeah. And you've got to, you know, I don't know. I, I just thought I, I was just a little disappointed in that. I think it's hard. Uh, I mean, these aren't robots. These are people. And I think but it's you, his first game back. Well, yeah. But you got to make sure that he's, uh, that it's being treated as he's coming out because they're, um, rotating him, you know, easing him back in. That's why I think they, they should have had it scheduled and done it throughout, you know, um, you know, given Forsyth like three or four series over the course of the game um, and not have him being benched. Cause if it, if it shows up and he's like, Oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's clearly done. We're going to pull him out and bench him. Then, you know, that's how you lose a player. That's how you, you know, um, uh, have a player start co- turning coaches out. Off I would because say he that if, trust if, him. if you had asked uh, Charles Cross, if he got tired at the end of the game, he would probably admitted it. I mean, he, he was clearly tired. Yeah, I you know it's over. It is what it is. Um, I you know it's one of those games you wish you had at the end of the year because it was it was very close. Uh, we played well enough to win. We just didn't mm-hmm. get it done. Um, yep. You know we were in the red zone a lot. We prevented Cincinnati from getting to the red zone a lot. Um, the entire second half, we should have won the game. We should in normal situation we would have won this game. Um, so that makes it really difficult to, um, to take, but here we are three and two, we're able to kind of move on. Maybe this is a learning experience for the team in some way. Um, I think it really just does boil down to, you know, Geno Smith, uh, you know, learning from this as well as getting healthy on the offensive line. I don't know where a Lucas is at. Pete said, uh, last week that he was one to two weeks away. Maybe it's one. Hopefully I've got my fingers crossed and he's back at practice this week. We'll see. Um, Cause having him back, I think is huge. Like he's, mm-hmm. you know, so far in his career, short as it is, has turned out slightly better than Charles cross in my opinion so far. And to have him back would be critical to that offensive line being successful as, as we head down the stretch for sure. Up well, next, early, is the, I say early in last season, I would agree with that down the stretch in last <clears> season. Um, his play fell off more than crosses. They both did. They they just were were out and were down at the end of the year. But um, getting him back is just it's a big piece because um, he's part of the reason why the offense was so much better last year. Um, yeah. Because I, they had I two competent now, tackles. I am now a little worried about conditioning. We just we saw that kind of show up with Charles Cross. Abe Lucas, you know, has got a, a knee thing going on, and so. He may not have been able to run or stay in condition or whatever. So that, that might be a concern as well. Um, up next is the Cardinals. Cardinals are like one and five. They've played tough. They played hard, but they just haven't been able to keep up with, uh, the teams that they've faced. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, if you want a good, uh, get right game, it's at home against the Cardinals. Um, the worst team in the NFC West. It's a division game. Um, Cardinals have always played hard, but um, I think they'll come up short uh, this week. We'll have a preview show towards the end of the week, and we'll talk about all of it. Um, how do you feel about this game, Keith? Do you think it it changes your perception of the team at all? No, I, it, it's a bad game. It's it's um, the fact that the defense played so well against. Uh, a quarterback like George Burrow and a guy like Jamar Chase. And it's just a complete offense. You know I mean? They got, got mixed in in that running game too. The defense played so well. It showed to me that this team can play with anyone, um, but they need the offensive line in Gino to show up. And if they don't, then the offense is going to, you know, it, it's going to struggle. Um, the talent's there. They just got to do it. Come out and execute, do the job. And um, they've shown in the previous three weeks that they're capable it's just they didn't um, didn't play well in this one. It's one game. Yeah. Don't yeah. overact to one game. I mean, I am excited about the offense. I, I'm still excited. We still have all these players. I'd like to see Charbonnet get a little bit more of a run. But um, we've got a lot going on on offense. We should be able to, to really kind of dictate terms and, and the struggles that we've seen from them, the inconsistencies and so forth. I do think some of that does come from the, the line, but we've also seen the line playing above their pay grade as well. Uh, you know, the, the interim guys coming in 
um, doing the best that they can. But as Pete Carroll said, it finally caught up to them in this game. And I think so. I think that's exactly what happened. Um, and we'll see uh, how, it, how it goes down the stretch. I, I do see improvement there. I mean, if the defense can keep playing the way it is and the potential that this offense has and that kind of comes into sync, I think, you know, we can see a pretty decent improvement here in the next uh, two or three weeks. We've got five winnable games on the schedule coming up here. Um, mm -hmm. And they need to just kind of go take care of business. And really, they, need, they, they, they need to stay close to the 49ers is really what it, what it comes down to. Yeah, I mean, at, um, I'm not worried about the 49ers right now. It's not. I, it's just too early. It's not that I'm uh, counting them out or saying the Seahawks can't keep up or anything like that. Um, I just don't care. Um, I just, The Seahawks have to, they need to worry about themselves. Um, there's five winnable games. They better go four and one or better in these next five. Because after that, comes four brutal games, um, including two against the 49ers. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get better. I mean, having Charles Cross is, is, is back is good. I, I was a little disappointed down the stretch in his play, but he's got to get in shape. Once he does, I think he's going to be fine. I'd like to see uh, what they can do on the right side to help Kerhan over there. Even even bringing tight ends in again um, to chip a little bit more. They didn't do that very much here in this game. I was a little surprised, it, especially after Coran was struggling so much. Mm -hmm. um, I thought in the second half they'd make some adjustment. I was a little disappointed in that. But any Yep. All right. Let's get out of here. Uh, thanks, Keith. I appreciate your uh, coming in and, and talking Seahawks football with me. It's always a good time. You can find Keith on Twitter at Myers NFL. You can find me at NW Seahawk. The show is at Hawks Playbook. Seahawksplaybook.com has the web uh, website stuff. And you can find us on all your major podcast platforms and our own YouTube channel as well. When you get there, hit that subscribe button. Make sure those shows show up in your feeds every week. And uh, until next time, go Hawks. Go Hawks. Seahawks Playbook Podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at NW Seahawk, Keith is at Myers NFL, and the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.